talk about some free stuff. So if you're anything like myself, I love free things, especially when traveling because traveling can get a little bit expensive. So if you can find some fun free stuff to do, why not? I have my list here, so I will be looking at it, but let's just get right into it. So number one is to walk Seattle Center. If this is your first time in Seattle, you're most likely gonna wanna go see the Space Needle or any of the things in Seattle Center, so you'll be over there anyways. But there's so much to look at and it's quite a large plot of land. What a weird way to say that. <laughs> it's just a large space with a lot of different things that you can walk around and see. There's the fountain, there's a little jungle gym, there's some sort of like art stuff, and the Mopop itself looks super cool. Like there's a lot of picturesque places to go over there. So I definitely recommend walking Seattle Center. You don't have to go and pay to go up to Space Needle or to go to the Mopop. I highly recommend that you do, but if you're on a budget, they are super cool just to look at in general still. Next up is Gasworks Park. Hanging out at Gasworks Park, especially in the summertime, is one of my favorite spots to be. It's just one of the perfect places to hang out when it's sunny out. You get to see the best view of Seattle, you get to see the water and all the boats, and you even get to see some seaplanes coming in and out, which is always fun. And there's also the big gas plant, I think that's what it used to be, which is what makes up Gasworks. It's one of my favorite picnic spots, which can be a really, really cost-effective thing to do. So next up, I have a list of things because there are quite a few museums, museums, with around Seattle area, and a lot of them have free entry days. I'm gonna give you a little list. So for the first Thursday of every month, the Seattle Art Museum, the Nordic Museum, Museum of Flight, Museum of History and Industry, Museum of Natural History and Culture, and the Henry Art Gallery are all free on the first Thursdays of the month. Places that have daily free admission would be the Fry Art Museum, the Center for Wooden Boats, the Duwamish Longhouse Cultural Center, the Klondike Gold Rush Museum, and the Center on Contemporary Art. I highly recommend going to the Seattle Art Museum if you get the chance, if you happen to be here on the first Thursday of the month. It's free, you should go, but they always have really cool exhibits. The only other one of these that I have personally been to besides the Seattle Art Museum is the Museum of Flight, which is in South Seattle, but that's also a really, really cool museum if you like airplanes and things like that. So included in that is Sculpture Park. That is also daily free admission because it is outside, so it is part of the Seattle Art Museum. It's just they're like outside exhibits that anybody can walk past. It's nice because it's on the water, so if it's a nice day, even if it's not a nice day, it has a beautiful view of all of the water. Sometimes you can see the cascades, which is awesome. And there's just a bunch of art all around. They're all kind of random, but art can be super random sometimes. And it's a really, really awesome walk, or a, they have a really nice bike path, so you can bike or scooter or walk or run or whatever you want to do. I also specifically like Sculpture Park because it leads into Myrtle Edwards Park and that's a really nice park to walk through. You can go down to the water, there's like, it's not beachy, but there's kind of like a rocky beachy area where you can sit and watch the waves and I know a lot of people take their dogs there to play in the water and it's just, it's a really really chill spot. And it's within a walk to downtown, it's probably like, I think when I did it it was like a 15 minute walk from Pike Place, like 15-20 minutes from Pike Place. So sticking with parks, there's also Discovery Park. And this one you're probably gonna need some transportation to because it is a little bit farther north than some of the other things on my list, but it's the perfect place if you wanna kinda get out a little bit into the nature without having to go all the way to the mountains or anything like that. You can drive up there. There is a larger parking lot when you get there and then there's trails that you can take that take you all the way out to a lighthouse. So there's a lighthouse out there, which I really like. It's very calming. You can go down to the water if you want. I personally think that the best time to go to Discovery Park is in the fall because there's so much foliage. Like it's so beautiful with all the colors. I do think you should go anytime, but fall I think is peak for Discovery Park just with all the colors and things like that. But yeah, definitely go and check out the lighthouse if you're gonna go out there. Next thing on my list is definitely catered more towards summer in Seattle, and that is to go swimming in Lake Union. Of course, you can rent kayaks and paddle boards and things like that, and that obviously costs money. So swimming is just as fun. I spent so much time this past summer 
at Lake Union swimming, you buy some floaties, you know, right before summer starts and then just go float out there and hang out all day. So on the south end of Lake Union, there is a little like boat drop-in place with a little dock. That's where a lot of people will go and kind of just post up and hang out and because it's easy to get in and out of the water there. And a lot of people also like Myrtle Edwards Park will bring their dogs and have them play around right there because it's easy to get in and out. I honestly think that might be the only place that you can just like get right in the water to swim. So I would recommend doing it from there. Another place that people like to go to swim, definitely colder because it's a different type of water, is Golden Gardens, which is in Ballard. I have shown Golden Gardens a bunch of times throughout my videos. It's basically the most beachy area to go in Seattle. It could feel like you're on a beach without like palm trees and stuff, but the sand is nice and it usually gets really, really packed in the summertime. You can if you get really lucky. They do have designated fire pits that you can have fires. Those you have to get there really early though for because people do scout them out. But if you get lucky, super fun. And there's also volleyball courts out there and there's like concessions and bathrooms and all of that stuff. It's a perfect place to have a barbecue. And like I said, a lot of people go swimming in there. I feel like the water's too cold for me there. But if it's hot enough, I guess I would do it. My friends swam there last year, but I love hanging out at Golden Gardens because it's just like, it's really the beachiest area you're going to get within the city limits. Next up, I think if you haven't already done it, this is a must do. It is free. I mean, you're just at a little park. But that's Cary Park. Cary Park is in Queen Anne and it is on a hill. You just go down Highland, I believe is the street that it's on. And there's this little park, you'll see a little sculpture and it has, dare I say, the best view of the city skyline that you can get here. I think so, because Gasworks is nice, but it's farther away. I think Cary Park is probably the closest that you can see most of the skyline, and it's it's pretty spectacular. If you can get there for sunrise or sunset, it will be kind of packed with people, but still worth seeing. Next on my list is also a body of water that you can swim in. Wouldn't recommend swimming in it, but you can and walk around. This is one of my favorite places in Seattle. I feel like I have such a soft spot because I used to live in this area and I just, I love this lake, but it's Green Lake. I don't know what it is about Green Lake. It just feels so homey to me. There's always a bunch of people walking or riding bikes or roller skating or doing whatever. And I don't know, there's just something about it that makes it so comfortable to me. But most of the time when I go there, I just went to tan because there was a lot of good grass to tan on during the summertime. You can rent paddle boards, you can rent kayaks, you can rent the, what are those called, paddle boats. There's tennis courts, there's a basketball court. I think there's an indoor pool. There's like little diving boards for the people that do want to swim in there. I personally say don't swim in there just because it's kind of dirty to be honest. I haven't swam in there in a long time, maybe it's not as dirty as it used to be, but the last time I did swim in it, I just felt like there was kind of like a film on me, if that makes sense, but do whatever you want to do. You can swim in there if you want to. So moving on, this next one is a little bit different than the last few, but if you get the chance, you do kind of have to get lucky again with this one, but it's to visit the Amazon Spheres. So the Amazon Spheres are basically, I'm pretty sure on the cusp of both Belltown and South Lake Union, but they're in the downtown area. And if you walk by it, you literally cannot miss it. But it is built by Amazon. It's basically a communal workspace for Amazon employees, but they do let the public in every, let me see. It's open to the public 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. the first and third Saturday of each month. I'm pretty positive you need to make a reservation and reservations are posted in real time 15 days in advance starting at 10 a.m. So if you're really on top of it, then you can get a spot. This is something that I have never done <laughs> because it's kind of hard to get into. However, if you happen to know somebody that works for Amazon, Amazon employees can bring up to six guests. So if you know somebody that works there, just get them to get you in. But besides it being a workspace, it's essentially just a huge terrarium or like greenhouse because there is a ton of different types of plants. There's like exotic plants. They do have a little green patch on the side with some stairs that people like to hang out. There is a little dog park at the top as well if you just wanna chill. They have the banana stand out there a lot of the time. Amazon has these banana stands that are free for everybody if you just want a free banana. 
Speaking of things that I have not done yet, but I do want to do, there is this little program down at South Lake Union um, called the Public Peapod Program, and it is these free rowboats. So they're open Wednesday to Sunday all year long. You just have to make a reservation. I feel like it's probably similar to the spheres where it can be hard to find reservations, but if you get lucky enough, you can take a free one hour rowboat around South Lake Union. And I think that would be super cool. I haven't, I wanted to get on the list, but it's just not been good weather for it yet here. So hoping to do that this summer, we'll see. So next up is to visit Alki. And Alki is on the west side of Seattle, so you would be looking back at the city. And that would be basically besides Golden Gardens, the other closest thing that we have to a beach. But it's essentially just one really long road with a bunch of stuff on one side, like restaurants and things like that. And then the water on the other side. You can take the water taxi there. Let me double check how much a water taxi is. Okay, so if you did want to take the water taxi, I know this isn't free, but it's pretty inexpensive. It is $5.75 for a one-way, so around $12 for there and back. If you didn't have a car or wanted to drive all the way to West Seattle, the water taxi is an awesome way to get there. I think it only takes like 15 minutes and you're already in Alki, but Alki is super fun to hang out in. Honestly, any time of the year, summer being the best because it is a little bit more beachy, but you can visit it at any time. Next up is to visit the farmer's markets. There are farmer's markets for every day of the week. I will leave a link in the description for all of the lists, but I'm just gonna tell you the ones that are on Saturdays and Sundays because I think that's when most people are here. So for Saturday, you can do the Magnolia Farmer's Market, you can do the U District, the South Lake Union, or Open Every Day Pike Place Market. On Sundays, there's the Capitol Hill Farmer's Market, the Fremont Sunday Market, which is one of my favorites, the Ballard Farmer's Market, which is also one of my favorites. There's also a West Seattle Farmer's Market, Mercer Island Farmer's Market, and the Pipe Place Market, which is open every day. You're definitely not expected to buy anything. It's fun to just walk around and be a part of it. But if you want, maybe get some food, support some local businesses and some small businesses. I love a farmer's market. I'm such a sucker for a farmer's market. Like I said, my two personal favorites out of all of them are the Fremont and the Ballard Market. Moving on is to visit the library. The library is open to anybody. You don't have to love books, you can just go. The thing that I personally think sets our library apart from anywhere else, cause I feel like you're probably like, why would you go to the library? But ours is architecturally so aesthetically pleasing. It's such a strange building, but it looks so cool inside and out. So it's fun to just go in and walk around and look at all of just all of the structural aspects of it. I believe there's like nine floors and you can go all the way up. Make sure to be quiet because you're in a library, obviously. But there's just like so many little hidden walkways and things you can go through. And also if you're, you know, respectful of the people around you, it's a super cool place to take pictures. So next thing up is to take a visit to the Kubota Gardens. The Kubota Gardens is a 20 acre Japanese style gardens and it was established by Fujitaro Kubota in 1972, I believe. It's just basically this beautiful open garden that's open to the public. It is free, but if you want to donate, there is that option as well. It's in South Seattle and it is open every day, 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. So there's a lot of opportunity to go if that's something that sparks your fancy. If you are wanting to visit, I have heard that the best time to go is in fall because that's just when everything is in full bloom. I gotta resituate. Okay. Next up is to visit the Belltown Art Walk. The Belltown Art Walk is open every second Friday of each month all year round and it's obviously in Belltown. I'll throw up a map of all the places that you can go. There is quite a few. But basically the whole purpose of the art walk was to build a community around the arts and it kind of gives people the opportunity to see local artists and things that maybe they wouldn't have been able to see on their own because they're all in one spot. So that's super cool. There is some bars that are located along there if you want to get some drinks too for 21 plus, obviously. You should go. It's all self-guided, so you can go at your leisure, which is awesome. And maybe buy some cool art and take it home with you. Okay, so the last two on my list are Pier 62 and Pier 66. So Pier 62 is actually brand new. It actually opened in September of 2020 and it is all part of the revitalization of the waterfront. 
So they're very much still in construction now. If you come visit, you will see that there's a lot of construction down by the waterfront. It is this really cool pier. They have a lot of cool little things. Well, not a lot, but you can go and there's this little soccer turf. There is cornhole. And I have been to an event or two during the summer. Sometimes the city will throw little events. And so there will be like music and things like that at the pier, which are super cool to visit. And it's also a beautiful place to just to see the city skyline or to sit and look at the water because you could do both. Moving down to Pier 66, it's obviously just down the road. It's actually on the way to Sculpture Park. So if you do end up going to see the piers, you can just hit Sculpture Park after. That's exactly what I did filming this. Um, Pier 66 has been there for a while, but it is one of the... I keep saying it's one of the best views. There's obviously a lot of good views of the city, but this is such a cool view of everything that you get to see from the waterfront as well as the water. A lot of the time when there are the cruise ships, it docks at Pier 66. So it's kind of cool to see the cruise ships up close because I've never been on a cruise and they're freaking massive. Um, but yeah, a lot of the times it will dock there, but you just get this awesome view of the city. It's free, you just walk up, there is an elevator too, but it's a really cool place to just take some pics, get some get some sights, sit down, enjoy the water and the views. If you're there for sunset, that's pretty lucky. <sighs> okay, we made it. <laughs> that was my full list of free or, you know, little inexpensive things to do around the city if you are visiting. I hope you enjoyed. If you have been to Seattle or you live in Seattle and you can think of anything else that I didn't mention, Go ahead and throw it out there. I'm sure people will appreciate the recommendations. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for always watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Cheers to free stuff. <laughs>